Concerned about the quality of life of senior citizens. Local hotels in high demand throughout source markets. And coming up in sports, Kyron Pollard's Mumbai Indians falter in today's IPL game against the Rajasthan Royals. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Good evening, I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. The rebranded Flo Oystins Festival is officially underway. The opening ceremony is currently taking place and being headlined by an array of local cultural performances on three separate stages. Chair of the Oystins Festival Committee, Tony Thorne, says this year promises to be a mix of the traditional as well as some new and exciting additions. Persons can expect the traditional activities such as the dolphin skinning, the fish boning competitions, of course the crowd favorite of the greasy pole competitions, the strong man boat pulling competition, and the fish cake eating, to name a few. We also have our net throwing competition as well. But we also have new competitions. Persons would have seen the celebrity cook-off. Um, we also have new activities, such as the Bajan storytelling and folk concert, which takes place on Monday. Well, tomorrow there will be a tea party and Easter children's parade, as well as children's Easter bonnet competition. Ms. Thorne says she's particularly excited about the zones at the festival. Persons can go and get their, their pedicures done, their henna done. There's also the fashion zone as well, activity zone. We have a bunch of new stall owners. So we have our traditional stall owners who would have been with us for 20 plus years. But we have a lot of new, vibrant, young persons who have food trucks. And they also will be a part of that as well. So we have persons that are doing like poutine and different things. Uh, we have presence of the Muslim Women's Association. They'll be doing henna. So we have a lot of wonderful uh, activities going on. Well, of course, you know, we'll bring you that full story on the official launch of the Oysins Festival in the news tomorrow. A government minister is worried about the quality of life of some senior citizens. Minister of Elder Affairs Cynthia Ford says, while many people are living longer, they aren't necessarily living happier. Sharika Griffith has that story. Barbados is among the countries with the highest number of centenarians per capita. Minister of Elder Affairs Cynthia Ford says almost every month someone reaches the milestone. But she's concerned that too many seniors are not fully enjoying their golden years. There are too many thousands of our citizens who are living longer, but they are generally plagued with numerous ailments and diseases and challenges which impact on the quality of life. And the Honorable Minister mentioned non-communicable diseases. Minister Ford was speaking during the launch of the 2019 National Senior Games in Independence Square, which followed a parade through the city. Minister of Sports John King says with Barbados identified as the sixth unhealthiest country in the world, it's evident the population needs to get back to being more active. A lot of us had to catch the buses, which means that you had to walk sometimes long treks away from the bus stop just to get home with goods and other things. I am saying that this ranking for Barbados, regardless of how well or how the statistics maybe really does not represent the Barbados that you and I grew up in. And it means, therefore, that we have got to do something to change those statistics. Minister King is, however, pleased with the participation at past National Senior Games and hopes more people will register for this year's event scheduled for June 10th. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Thanks, Sharika. The Sandals Resorts brand continues to reap success in Barbados. General Manager of Sandals Barbados and Sandals Royal Barbados, Ramel Sabrino, says the local hotels are in high demand in markets throughout North and South America, the United Kingdom, and Europe. Mr. Sabrino made the comments during Sandals Prestige Awards, which carried an Arabian Nights theme. Now, he says operating the brand is a complex and sophisticated operation, and its success can be attributed to the effort and dedication of the staff. Things that we put together that represent Sandals Barbados, Asaya, Royal Barbados as a product mean nothing 
because the real thing is the humanization of this concrete here, where you make it possible to put this name out there in the highest, the highest levels. The name of Sandals is out there because the Bayan people are representing our brand like ever before. And we wanted to respect that. And we wanted to give all our love and recognize that this is the best thing all around to run a hotel. Staff members were awarded in 17 categories during the ceremony. These included the movie, the mover and shaker talent of the year won by Brenton Robinson and the A-team of the year award, which was copped by the laundry team. Freemasons and the Scouts have a lot in common. Master of St. Michael's Lodge, Gregory Nichols, made that point today as he presented the Barbados Boys Scouts Association with a timely monetary donation at Harrison College. Mr. Nichols says the Boy Scouts played a major role in his development. I was able to get my Chief Scout Award before my academic studies took over, so I couldn't get the Chief Scout Award, but nevertheless, my heart is still in Scotland. And um, we find that there are a lot of similarities between our organizations and yours. And it is our hope that we can encourage what you do in terms of trying to build um, good, decent young men in our society, which we are in short supply, given what we've seen in recent times, but to help these organizations thrive. Transparency Institute Guyana Inc. wants a clear policy on how public office holders, especially ministers, should treat their private businesses when in office. The call comes from its president, Dr. Troy Thomas, who believes simply occupying certain positions can result in undue influence. In essence, that can cause the playing field, so to speak, to become unfair, where your business becomes better aligned and more likely to get um, jobs from the government because of your affiliation. That can come either through direct intervention or indirect intervention in the sense that the people handling it know who you are. They might, and especially if it's within your own ministry. Over in France, Yellow Vest protesters demonstrated for the 23rd consecutive week in Paris. Meredith Wood reports. Anger flared as protesters set fires in the streets of central Paris. Thick plumes of dark smoke hung in the air as the sounds of breaking glass and emergency sirens engulfed the French capital. Riot police clashed with protesters, ultimately using water cannons and tear gas in an attempt to defuse the tense situation. Street medics were seen carrying injured protesters through the crowd. What started as a protest against a gas tax hike eventually morphed into a broader protest against the French government and economic injustice. Now, in its 23rd consecutive weekend of demonstrations, the so-called yellow vest protesters are pointing to Notre Dame. Less than a week after a fire ripped through the historic cathedral, fundraising efforts to rebuild are well underway. Three of France's wealthiest families donated hundreds of millions of dollars, and some protesters point to the more than 900 million in donations as a glaring sign of economic inequality. Paris authorities say thousands more people participated in the demonstrations on Saturday than the weekend before.